Hi, my name is François Philippe Paradis. I'm the product manager for industrial trades products here at Festo Didactic in Canada. Let me introduce you to our newly released solution, which is called Basic Dimensional Metrology. So this is a learning solution that we developed with some job profiles in mind. In fact, we were thinking about machinist, CNC machine operators, millwrights, industrial mechanics, quality control technicians, and even mechanical engineers. In fact, we had in mind any job that requires the handling of measuring instruments, from the most basic, like a tape measure, up to micrometers, for example. What are the main learning objectives of this system? Identify and describe various measuring instruments, read various measuring scales, which may seem trivial, but it's pretty challenging. Just think about the various system of units, think about the vernier scale. These are quite challenging for students. Describe how to properly use the instruments, perform field checks on instruments, and this is really a key. Uh, it's good to have know-how, to be confident in your ability to take measurement, but you have also to be trusting the instrument that you're using. So field check is a really important aspect of that, and this is something we emphasize a lot in the training solution. They will obviously perform a lot of measurements. So this is not a theoretically oriented solution. This is really focusing on hands-on using the tools. But before you can use a tool, you have to be able to read technical drawings. So that's basically the first step. And there are standards, terminology, and symbols which differ slightly from region to region. And this is covered within the learning solution. So in a nutshell, students will have to read and interpret technical drawings, select instruments, handle them properly, take measurements, read uh, measuring scales, and report the measurements. So what's included in our learning solution? Whenever you order the solution, which is called Basic Dimensional Metrology, you'll get a set of measuring instruments. You'll, set, you'll get parts, carefully designed parts that will really put the teacher, not the teacher, but that will really put the students and the instruments to the limit. Uh, and these are all stored in stackable trays. And I'll present each of the instrument and parts uh, in, the coming, uh, in the coming minutes. So whenever you buy the solution, you get parts, measuring instruments, and courseware. And this is really where the value of the system lies. It's the combination of the parts, exercises, projects, and measuring instruments all put together. So we have divided up this basic dimensional metrology TP, or training package, in two manuals. The first one is called semi-precision measurement, and the second one is called precision measurement. The line in between is quite arbitrary, but just to give you an idea, uh, we consider a tape measure to be a semi-precision measuring instrument. It's pretty basic, but we consider a micrometer to be a precision measuring instrument. It's an arbitrary line, but once I present the tools, it will make sense. So let me switch view here and introduce you to the tools that we supply with the semi-precision measuring instruments manual. So you will recognize most of these tools as they are used pretty much every day. Not all of them, but most of them. You for sure recognize the tape measure. It may seem trivial, but there is a correct way of using it. A protractor, this is used to determine angles. Depth gauge, caliper for indirect measurement, various types of rules, thickness gauge, and screw thread pitch gauge, which allows you to determine the type of thread that you have. If you've noticed, we have QR codes located at various locations, either close or underneath each of the measuring instruments. And these are used for students to, go, to gain a quick access to the technical specification of each tool. So you just scan it with your phone, it opens up a browser, and then it shows a, a web page with the main technical specification of each tool. But the tools themselves are not interesting if they are not combined with parts. And this is really the interesting part of the TP, of the training package. We supply parts which are not only motivating to students, but also quite challenging. 
So they all represent something real, something that learners will be able to relate to. And we think this is a key to, uh, to gain know-how and to remember it. Not just to be able to do it once, but to remember how you to do it. If you can connect with reality, knowledge is uh, gained uh, and retained easily. So we have a bunch of parts here and I'll switch view again to show you the main parts that we have and how they are used by students in, uh, in the manuals that we supply. So the first one is really just a TV mounting bracket. You may have that at home. This is just used to hold a TV to a wall. And on the right side, you can see the technical drawing with a bunch of measurements. So that would be from the instructor uh, manual, the answers actually. So the idea is not for us to supply a drawing and just ask the students to fill in the blank. It's really a guided approach. So in the exercises, we take the student step by step and we guide him through the correct use of the various measuring instruments. So let's go to our newly released e-learning platform, which is called Festo Learning Experience or Festo LX. And I'll show you how students are actually going to do an experiment with that uh, training package. So let me switch here. So this is how it looks like when you are using the TV bracket and the tape measure from the basic dimensional meteorology package within Festo LX. So this is exactly the same content as you would find in a printed manual or the PDF, but it's presented in a different way and it allows you uh, teachers to uh, follow what students are actually doing, their answers, for example, and it's a little bit more uh, interesting in terms of, uh, of flow. So for each of the tools that we have and for each of the parts, uh, basically students will have to follow steps. You can see here that's really uh, numbered step by step. Uh, it will tell you take the part, uh, take this and this measurement, but along the way uh, it will give hints, advice on how to properly use the instruments. So it's really an approach where students will be not left on their own to figure out how to do stuff, but really to, they, they will really be guided in the process. So what you see here is an example where uh, it says uh, identify the TV bracket center to center distance, and then you will have to take these various measurements and then you will have to enter them here. Uh, in that case, the answers are already there because this is the instructor version of the test project. So multiple measurements are made uh, within the learning experience here, really one by one with advice. And at the beginning, something I have not taken the time to show you, but there is theory uh, that explains the different parts of the instruments, the different challenges you can face when you're using them. So we put a lot of emphasis on photos, pictures that are really talking to students. Instead of spending a lot of time trying to explain something, there are multiple photos. That's a plus. But then also, if a concept is more complicated to explain, we take the time to include a video. And the video appears right, in Festo, uh, right away in Festo LX and shows you how to do something. For example, how to use a micrometer. Uh, or to use a, a depth gauge. So there are some videos when the concepts are a little bit more uh, complicated to pass with text. So this is an example. So this is the TV bracket. If I come back to my presentation here. So uh, the TV bracket has multiple opportunities. Again, if you take a look on the right side, you'll see we have uh, two system of units, millimeters and inches. It's not usual in a drawing. In that case, it's on purpose. We really want students to experiment both systems. Uh, we have other parts as well. If I go back here to my slides, we have the hydraulic fitting. Uh, again, this is taken from a part that exists for real. And the measurements that they will take uh, they represent measurements that would be the, the ones from real parts. It's not something out of nowhere. It has a, a justification for a certain precision or for the use of a given instrument. Again, multiple opportunities of measurement here. A couple of examples on how students will use them. Uh, we also have what we call a joist hanger. So this is a part that looks 
like this, like you can see on the picture. Uh, in North America, if you've done any construction work, uh, you've probably seen those. Uh, if not, no big deal. Still, it's a real application that makes it really interesting. It doesn't require a lot of precision. So in that case, students will be using different types of rules instead of using a tape measure, like shown here in the pictures. Different measurement of angles. And there's also a part which, which is called a sensor bracket. In this case, uh, we have three, three times this part, one, two, three. And these parts will be used within a project. Students will have to decide which measuring instruments they, uh, they select. Uh, they will have to take different measurements, decide if the parts are compliant or not. And they will have to explain and justify what they did. So it's not just about it takes for granted at this point that students know how to use the various measuring instruments. So they've used them in the joist hanger, TV bracket, and uh, hydraulic fitting. Now, with all these exercises uh, completed, we take for granted that they have enough knowledge to be on their own within a project and to present the results like they would do in real life if they were on the plant floor. So you have multiple parts. You have to decide which measuring instruments you take. You have to take measurements and report your findings. So exercises with parts uh, where we impart knowledge and then projects uh, which really put the students to the test. And we also include uh, transversal skills like communication and, uh, and so on. So this is for uh, the parts for the semi-precision semi measuring instruments and parts. We also have uh, another manual which is called precision measurement. So this is the same ID as the previous one, except in that case, we have other instruments and other parts. So again, I'm going to show you the various instruments that we have and show you how we use them in a real experiments uh, that, stu that students will actually do. So let me switch view again. So right here, <clears throat> same idea as the previous set of instruments, but in that case, we call them precision measuring instruments. So uh, you have a digital caliper, which is quite easy to read because you have a digital display here, but we also include a vernis caliper, caliper with uh, the vernis scale, which is quite challenging for students to read. Uh, these are for direct measurements. These also, the micrometer and the digital micrometer, but uh, there comes a time where it's impossible to make direct measurements. So in this case, uh, we also include, for example, these telescoping gauges and small hole gauges, which are used for indirect measurements. So basically, when it's not possible to use an instrument directly on a part, uh, because of physical constraints, for example. Same idea as with the other, uh, the other instruments. You have a QR code and you can get the uh, most important technical specifications uh, from the QR codes using uh, a phone. Other parts, uh, again, they are still all related to reality, which makes it much more interesting for students. Let me go to the parts with you. So the first one is a pump shaft, and it looks and feels exactly like a pump shaft you would find in the industry. So again, it's really an application that students can relate to. Multiple measurements have to be taken. And if you look on the drawing, you'll see that in that case, we introduce also the concept of tolerances. Uh, this is the range within which we consider a measurement to be good. If it's not within that range, we say the measurement is not good and possibly the part is not compliant. So the concept of tolerance is introduced and uh, there's a lot of experiments that uh, relate to that. So in the case of the pump shaft, there will be, as you can see on the drawing, multiple opportunities of measurement, which is really the key here. So they will use the vernier caliper uh, to measure diameters, length, uh, 
width of a QA. So they will use the various instruments uh, in multiple ways. So there are a lot of opportunities for measurement and then they also have all the possible ways of using an instrument, which is pretty important. Uh, whenever there is a concept which is a little bit more complicated to explain, as I said earlier when I shown uh, Festo LX, the learning experience platform, uh, we also include videos like this one. And this type of video is quite interesting. Uh, it really simplifies the life of, uh, of teachers. Uh, So it shows in that case how to uh, use, how to set the zero on a uh, Verni micrometer. So it goes step by step showing the students how to perform that. So I'm going not to go to the whole video here, but it really is interesting. It's not, there is no narration, so it's not language sensitive. It just shows you exactly how to do what's asked in the experiment. So that's one approach we have. Uh, and about the parts, I was talking about the various types of parts that we have. So they all represent real application. In that case, we have a conveyor cover. This is taken from a real, so this is a cover in which you would actually uh, insert bearings where you see some holes here. So again, we, talk about tolerances. There are multiple measurements that are made by students with here with the digital caliper. Uh, here we have an indirect measurement with a small hole gauge. Another part we have is called a locating pin. And we have the last part, which is also part of a project, which is called the hydraulic brake caliper. So it represents a real uh, hydraulic brake caliper, which is really interesting because again, it puts everything into perspective and they will have to take multiple measurements. It's a project. In that case, again, it's not an exercise which is guided. It's really a project. And same idea as with the other manuals, you practice with parts, uh, with guided exercises. And once the, the knowledge is gained, you can practice it and you can show that you understand by using different parts in the project section of the manual. So let me show you a little bit how it looks like uh, for a student when they look at the manuals themselves. So I've shown with Festo LX. Now let me show you a little bit how it looks like with a PDF or a printed copy of the manual. So at the beginning of each experiment, you have the time it takes to perform the experiment and you have the main learning outcomes. So that allows you to select experiments. So if you don't want to do one, uh, you can know right away if, it's, uh, if the length is okay to you, you can know if the learning outcomes, they correspond to what you need to teach. So there's always a bit of theory, but we don't spend too much time on the theory itself. It's really, as I said at the beginning, oriented to practical aspects of measurement. So it's good to know the different parts. Uh, it's good to know how to read it. It's really important. But then we really quickly move to using the tool. So I'm going to scan through the theory quite quickly here. Uh, here it explains how to measure with an actual micrometer. And same idea as with the learning, the Festo e-learning platform. If you don't have the Festo e-learning platform, in the manuals, you will use your phone to scan a QR code. And this will bring up a video which explains you uh, like exactly like the one I just shown you in the, in the slide uh, earlier. So you can either use a phone to scan the QR code, or if you don't have a phone, you can just click the link and it brings you to the video. So in this case, you can see that this is a step-by-step -step experiment where we explain how to set the zero on a vernier micrometer. Again, I'm not going to go through all the details, but you can see that we put a lot of emphasis on photos, pictures that speak, and we think it targets, uh, the, the kinds of students it target is, is really those that will learn by looking and by repeating uh, what they just saw. One interesting aspect is that uh, 
Learning is enhanced with augmented reality, which means that if a student wants to prepare but doesn't have access to the part, and some students have a hard time figuring out how a part looks like in 3D, if you turn it around and you want to see the details, sometimes a photo is not enough and a drawing in 2D is not enough. So they can actually use their phone, scan, uh, scan just the photo of the part, and with the free Festo AR application, they can see the part in 3D uh, through their phone as if it was floating in the air just around them. So it's, it's kind of cool for students and it helps those that have a hard time figuring out how it looks like from a, a drawing and they really need the 3D. So really step by step, exercises also uh, which are aimed at reinforcing in the review questions that are aimed at reinforcing reading measuring scales. Uh, we think it's important to use the, the, the measuring instruments, but it's really important to master how to read these instruments. So there is a lot of review questions, questions that deal only with reading the different scales. So you have a picture of a scale and it asks you what is the measurement. So this is for exercises. As I said, at the end of each of the manuals, you also have projects uh, where students are going to put to the test their acquired knowledge and skills. So, uh, before I conclude this uh, short video presentation, I would like also to uh, emphasize uh, some of the most important questions that we have when we talk about this uh, training platform with this training uh, package. How many hours can you deliver with uh, the basic dimensional metrology package? With the tools, parts, exercises from the students' manuals, there is up to 35 hours of uh, combined theory and exercises. So if a student starts from scratch, from zero, he knows nothing, and he decides to read the complete theory, watch the videos, uh, and practice and follow the steps, uh, it's 35 hours. How many students can work at the same time? Uh, this is another very interesting question. The training package has been designed in such a way that two students can work independently uh, from one another. So we have exercises that use parts and tools, but uh, a given tool and part is never used at the same time in two exercises, which means that two students can work completely independently at the same time. Uh, is it available on our newly released uh, e-learning platform? Yes, which is called Festo LX. So basically, in a nutshell, if I, if I summarize uh, what happens with this training package, we supply measuring instruments, specially designed parts, exercises, projects, in a package that is portable and really of a great value when you think about the learning outcomes and the job profiles that we target. So it's a really hands-on approach, key, turnkey solution. Uh, if you have any question or if you want to know more, more about the solution, you can go directly on the Festo Didactic website of your region uh, and your local sales representative will uh, make sure that all your questions are answered and uh, give you more details about that learning solution. So I want to thank you for your time and uh, hope, I hope that uh, this uh, learning solution is uh, of, a, of a great value for you and your students. Thanks for listening.